insulin is secreted, the response to the high blood sugar, and it brings your blood sugar to normal. So that's what's supposed to happen. You have breakfast, your blood sugar goes up, your pancreas secretes insulin, it brings your blood sugar to normal. That's what happens in the normal setting. Now, if you have metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance, your metabolism is totally mucked up. It doesn't work that way anymore. What happens with you is as you eat, blood sugar goes up, body secretes insulin, but part of the problem is that it's resistant. It's resistant to insulin. It doesn't work. So what happens? So your blood sugar is still high. So your pancreas is thinking, all right, they need more insulin. So you crank out more insulin to get your blood sugar normal. You keep cranking out insulin to get your blood sugar normal. But guess what? Guess what insulin does? Insulin causes weight gain, and it causes weight gain in your abdomen. So people who are exercising and eating right and doing all these things, their own body is resistant to insulin, and so they're not losing weight. And their own body is creating this extra insulin, which is making them actually gain weight. And unless we correct that, it just keeps going. It just keeps getting worse. Now, if you exercise your butt off, if you can exercise 90 minutes a day, 60 to 90 minutes a day, you can actually overcome insulin resistance. Oh and, and people can do that. It's tough, though. It's tough. I know. We try, right? I mean, but, but, but I'm just saying that it is possible. For those who can really aggressively exercise, you can usually really affect that insulin resistance, make the body more sensitive to insulin. Now, sometimes what happens when your insulin is sort of being erratically secreted to try to get your blood sugar normal is your body gets too much insulin. Now you accidentally got too much. And then what happens? your blood sugar drops to low. And then people feel very shaky and very tired. They may get a headache, and what do they do? They crave carbs because their blood sugar's low. They don't know their blood sugar's low, but they crave carbohydrates. Many people with this are like, oh yeah, that's me. I, that's exactly what happens. I feel fatigued and yucky, and then I crave carbs, and I eat them, and then this whole process just gets worse, okay? so. Basically what we do is we identify that that's what's going on, and then we fix it. We fix it in part by certain types of diet and exercise. Obviously the more exercise the better. When it comes to diet, it's low sugar, low carb. That fixes this problem more than, than a low fat diet. Low fat diet may actually make it worse, because what's in a low fat diet? Sugar. sugar. Carbs, and you gotta eat something, right? <laughs> you can't just, I mean, low fat, low carb, what is that? What are you eating? That's what I want to know. So, so obviously, but the thing is with this problem, it's a low-carb diet that's going to work better. Okay. And I'm not talking extreme diets like Atkins. I'm talking about just lower carbohydrate, lower sugar. I tell people to avoid high fructose corn syrup. Have this. Okay. You have to look at labels. All right. So that, so this, and then basically what we'll also do is use low doses of diabetes medications to help correct the insulin resistance. Very safe because the medicines we use don't cause, cause low blood sugar. They're generic, covered by insurance, like four bucks a month. And miraculously, people lose weight when we start to correct the underlying disorder that's present, that just hasn't been addressed previously. So that's powerful stuff. And again, I'm, t I'm spending so much time talking about this because it impacts so many people and may impact many of you or people you know, family members. Okay, yes? Is there a linkage between metabolic syndrome and pre-diabetic? Yes. So metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, pre-diabetes are basically, we're all talking about the same thing. So that's a good segue into what happens next. So you've got the patient with these high levels of insulin. That little pancreas and those little beta cells in the pancreas are cranking out insulin to try to get that blood sugar normal. But you know what? Over time, those little beta cells poop out. They just can't do it anymore. They've been overstressed. They've been cranking out all this insulin for years. So what happens then? The beta cells poop out. Well, now you can't make as much insulin anymore. So now the insulin starts to come down. But what happens? Your blood sugar starts to go up and bang, now you're diabetic. We say, oh, you're diabetic. You know what? By the time we find one abnormal blood sugar on you, you've lost about 50 to 60% of your pancreatic beta cells. One abnormal blood sugar. By the time we see an abnormal fasting sugar, you've lost 50 to 60% of your pancreatic beta cells. And you know what? You can't get it back. You can preserve what you've got left, and we can st hopefully stop the disease from progressing if we, if we get aggressive at that point, but you can't backtrack. So what I try to do, I, I hope very successfully in our clinic, 
is to identify people 10 years before that happens. Identify them at the stage when their insulin levels are high, they've got insulin resistance, but they're not yet diabetic because we can intervene much more um, effectively if we start the process early. If we wait until you're already diabetic, now we're backpedaling. And the medications that are available, we have less meds available to you because the meds are based on you having a pancreas with normal with beta cells that are working. And if you have lost your beta cell function, now you're dealing with potentially looking at insulin. So now you have to take insulin because as a diabetic, if you require insulin, you die without it. So, but we don't want you to get there. We want to identify that early on. And so that's what we try to do is identify this very early.